something strange. I'm at the layout. Actually, I'm under the layout on the northeast corner over here where we've created a little bit of space for us. Welcome to our second episode of Talking Trains with the Muffin. We got rejected uh, by our Facebook uh, login, but we're out live on YouTube, I think. We'll see. And we're recording, so I can put it back up on Facebook later. Uh, hope you guys are great. Uh, thanks for checking in. Appreciate it. We're going to chat a little bit tonight about wiring your model train layout. And um, I'm going to show you some stuff and talk about it. And that will be good. Let's see if I can get there. There's Mrs. Muffin right there behind me. All right. So let's see. So where are we going to start? Let's start talking about track. When we're talking about wiring the layout. I know they got this music turned way down, but I think I'm going to turn it all the way off. That's good. Okay. So this is a piece. Let's start with MTH real track. That's what this is. This is the common track that came in the MTH ready to run sets. And uh, let's talk about how we get power to it. So on the bottom of the track, you can see on both ends, there's a pair of brass connectors, uh, one on the inside and one on the outside. And if you've got this track system, you're going to use a, a lighted, if I can pull it out of my box, a uh, lighted terminal joiner, which I've now lost. So that's part of it. Here we go. I'm getting it out of my out of my toolbox. Liz is going to help me so I don't drop everything on the floor. So MTH makes a lighted adapter that we use to connect the track. And this one's missing the light. but And I'm out of stock of these. I got some on the way from MTH. But the way you put this in is you break this tab right here. And once you break the tab, you can just slide this underneath. And then you connect positive and negative uh, terminals right there to the track. So that's how you wire MTH real track, right? And if you want to do insulate sections, you could pull this center thing off right here, this center connector. But what I usually do is put a piece of tape or a piece of foam over it when I connect it together to insulate the center rail to divide it into blocks. We'll talk more about blocks. Okay, so that's MTH real track. Let's move on to Lionel fast track. Here's a piece of Lionel fast track. This is the kind that's got the opening here for you to plug the power supply in and the light turns red. And so that that's that's one way to uh, power Lionel fast track. The other thing you can do with Lionel is on the bottom of every piece of track, you see this little raised section here. This is where a pair of accessory wire adapters, here's a pair right here, can connect to the track to power it, right? And you put red on the center right there. Get my hand out of the way. Red right there. Put my hand on this side. How's that? And black on the other side. And so every piece of Lionel Fast Track has got these posts that you can use as accessory wire adapter to provide power to the track. Now, how do you insulate sections of Lionel Track, like for DCS? Well, they make one and an eighth inch sections that if you turn it over, it's got little wires underneath it with screws and you just disconnect the screws, take the wires out and that little piece becomes um, an insulated piece. All right, so that's fast track, Lionel fast track. Cool, all right, let's move on. Let's see what's next, oh yeah. So Gargraves and Ross, their track, as you know, it's got the wooden ties, it's a beautiful track. And it has these pins to connect it together. And if you wanted to insulate the center rail, you just pull that pin out. They also make an insulated pin that goes in that place. So how do you get power to this? Well, they make a pin with a wire solder to it. And you can get a pair of needle nose pliers and pull that pin out and attach that one in place with a, with a little wire hanging from it. And I always have trouble with those wires, getting them on there without breaking them. And so what I do on my layout for the Ross track and Gargraves track is I solder a wire to the side of the rail. And I accomplish that by heating the rail up 
put my soldering iron on the inside and touching the outside with my solder and solder on a wire like that. That's how I do it. So all the gargraves and Ross I have on the layout actually right above us is all uh, soldered power on there. I guess I shouldn't lean so far over. Um, so that's Ross and gargraves, how we get power to the track. Okay. And then last is Atlas, of course. And uh, Atlas is right here. And with Atlas, um, they make rail joiners that have wires on them. So you just take the existing rail joiner off that comes with the track and put on uh, terminal rail joiners. You know, the red goes to the center rail and the black goes to the outside rail. And the way I do it is... Can't hear me? Uh, volume is a bit low. Let me turn the volume up. How about that? Is that any better? Thank you for telling me. All right. Um, so the terminal rail joiners are here on the track, red to the center rail and black to the outside. And the way I do it on the layout is I run the terminal ra rail joiner to the, the common track, common rail, that's closest to the edge of the track. Um, that way I keep it the same all the way around. It doesn't really matter because the metal wheel sets are going to are going to connect to both outside rails and provide continuity, right? But I like to at least make me feel like I've got it organized by doing it that way. And then for insulating Atlas track, they make an insulated rail joiner. It's plastic that you can put on the on the center rail here to insulate that. So that's how we get power to all four track systems, okay? Um, good, all right, let's see, I got uh, Phil's on, Richard, Frank, can you hear me, yeah, Frank, yep, 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 that's better, okay, good, all right, good, now we're talking, all right, now we're good, okay. So let's talk about running the wire for the layout, okay? So let's do a, and, and, and we can't have a session like this without me drawing something, right? We already we learned that. Last time around, quit laughing back there. Uh, but so let's say we've got a simple layout that's an oval of track up to, let's say, eight feet by eight feet, something like that, right? And so what you can do, and, and maybe it's multiple tracks, not just one, but for each track, you're going to attach a red line to the center rail and a black line to the outside rail. And you can just run these directly to your transformer or your TIU, and, and that'll work fine. I mean, on an 8-foot by 8-foot layout, that'll be okay. And if you find, as your train, let's draw a train on here. Let's see. I should have had Liz draw this. we got to draw a train. We should draw a steam engine. This one's weathered by Harry, so it's got a lot of weathering on it. There's a steam engine. Okay, something like that. All right, so as the steam engine is running around the track, as it gets farther and farther away from the transformer, if it starts to slow down, it's because the track, you know, is losing some of its current as it goes. And an easy way to solve that is to drop two more wires all the way across the layout and run those back, hopefully underneath. Otherwise, the train will get tripped underneath the table and tie them into the same posts. And that should fix your problem on eight by eight. <laughs> Richard says. <laughs> You're a great artist. Yeah. Well, I'm getting a lot of help with my art. Rich says, Liz, Steve needs a red marker. Yeah. He does yeah. Need red marker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, one of the benefits of being colorblind is first of all, you look great in black always. And I don't. I wouldn't even know if I had a red marker. But that's a good. It's that's a good point. Way. Yeah. That, don't, don't you think that would? All right. So that's simple eight by eight. Okay. Well, that was really good, Mr. Muffin. You did a great job. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we'll get rid of that. I won't turn it over and try to do it again. Okay. So now, let's do a bigger layout. Let's do it. It's going to look very similar to the eight by eight. This track all the way around. But this one is going to be, let's say, 24 by 16. So it's going to be a bigger layout, 24 by 16. 
and a single power connection to the track is not going to work. It's not. It's going to lose too much along the way. And so a common way to do this, notice that we use the word common. A common way to do this is what we call common bus. I'll write that down. Where's that red marker? Um, looks like it. <laughs> I'm getting way too much help here. Okay, it is not a deformed Easter egg, but thank you. Thank you for commenting, really. Okay, so a common bus system, what we're going to do is we're going to have at the top of the layout, we're going to have a terminal block. Liz walked away. Here's a terminal block. That's a big one. We don't need a big one. Here's a small one. So we got a terminal block. I don't know where my little one went. Is it still in the bucket? Hold on a minute now. We're doing, if Harry Ike can say hold on a minute, I can say hold on a minute. I lost my little terminal block. I had one here a minute ago. Oh, well. So what we're going to do is we've got our transformer over here. And we're going to run a wire, a red wire, all the way around under the deformed Easter egg. This one's red, R-E-D. And we're going to run a black one all the way around. Black wire. And this becomes the common bus, okay? So it's running all the way around the layout. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the wires from the track, whoever's track system we're using, we're going to take the wires from the track, and we're going to drop them down and connect them to these common buses. And how do we do that? Well, an easy way to do it is to use this little suitcase connector. So here's one I've threaded. So, so this yellow wire is my common bus. I've got it running under the layout. And I've got a wire that goes up to the track, also yellow. I'm going to stick it in here like that. And then I close this so it looks like a suitcase. And I use a pair of pliers to clamp it down. And this little brass thing goes down between both wires and makes a connection. And so we're gonna, I'm going to do that wherever I drop a center rail wire and a ground wire, I'm going to connect them at the same place. I'm going to connect using suitcase connectors. And that works fine for common bus. Now, the problem with that, honestly, is if you get some kind of short, you can't find it. Um, you got to cut the wire to test it, which, ugh, I hate doing that. So what I do instead on my layout is I use a terminal block under the layout. So instead of the Instead of the suitcase connector, moving all my toys around here, Liz. I see that. Instead of a suitcase connector, I've got a little terminal block under the layout. And this would allow me to do two tracks. So I've got positive for inside, negative for inside, positive for outside. And what's next? Negative for outside. Is that right? Did I get it? So. Yeah. And... Then we drop down and connect to the bus. That way, if I have a short or something, I can need to find it, I can unscrew whatever track and test it. So under my layout, everywhere that we drop the track. Take that closer to the camera. Take that closer to the camera, okay. Yeah. Everywhere we drop the wires from the track, we connect it to a little terminal block, just like that. And we call this common bus, okay. Now, if we want to run MTH trains on this, like with DCS, we want to break this up into blocks. So maybe I do, I've got a break here, a break here, and a break here. So what that means is there's the center rail is insulated. I now have a red marker. It's orange. Oh, it's orange. Oh. <laughs> We couldn't find, yeah, we couldn't find red. Okay, so how many feet of track, Richard says, how many feet of track to do the drop down? Well, technically, let me throw that up there. 
the drop down should, is usually measured by the number of joiners. So when you've got a curve, you got a lot of joiners. So you need to do them a little closer together than when you've got long 40 inch straightaways. But I do is I drop about every 16 feet, you know, linear feet on, on my layout. And that may be not enough, um, but I think it helps. Uh, Phil says he did a drop every four feet. You know, you have always been an overachiever. Okay, <laughs> Phil. I mean, four feet, really? <laughs> okay, that it works, right? It works. It worked good. Oh, yeah. And 18-gauge wire, yes. You can use 18-gauge wire for the drops. But I would use, for the common bus, I would use 16 or even 14 braided. I like 14 braided because you can connect to it very easily. But it's still, you know, bigger wire. It's going to transmit the uh, the power better. So I, I do that. So, all right. Back to the Easter egg. Okay, so now we've insulated the track in three places. This... 24 by 16 layout, it'd probably be a little more than three, but for now, let's talk, say three. So I've insulated the center, and only insulate the center rail, wherever my finger is. Only, in, only insulate the center rail. You don't need to insulate the outside rails, just the center rail. And then in the middle of that block, just like we did here, is you're, you're going to drop your power, right? And you're going to drop, always drop the black and the red together. Now, why do we do that? Well, it's it's because in MTH's world, it's two-way communications with the engine. So the command DCS sends the engine goes out over the center rail, the red, and the command from the engine back to DCS comes over the black. And we want those signals to travel roughly the same distance. So they go out and back the same distance. That way the communication packets don't get out of sync. If we don't do that and they it hears from the engine before the engine got the command or vice versa, I don't know. There's some engineer that knows this. Um, it can get scrambled and then you start getting a message that says engine not found, engine not on track, engine took a breather. It's out, it's out for lunch, whatever. It just doesn't work anymore. And so the way we fix that in the old days is to make sure we divide it into blocks and we bring the block back plus and minus back at the same distance, okay? Uh, Sasha so says 14 gauge, 16 gauge drops every, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's really good. 14 gauge bus, 16 gauge drops, drops every six feet. On my 1816 layout, that that's perfect. You're kind of a show off, honestly. That's a, that's very good. If we were giving a quiz here, you would have to sit in the front of the class now, okay? Because that that's excellent. Yep, love that. All right, okay. So that's common bus wiring. Okay, now in the DCS layout uh, we had at home, uh, which was covered as a centerfold layout in classic toy trains a long time ago. This worked great. Common bus worked great. And it's important to remember, I forgot, that when you come back around to the trans the transformer, you need to tie both wires together, right? So you got a terminal block sitting here, and you've got one going that way, counterclockwise, and one going clockwise. So you want them, you want them connected together. So it's so it is a, a perfect loop, okay? And on our home layout, this worked great. Forgot the apple polish. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. All right. Now, on a bigger layout, when we went to the first public layout in Carmel, uh, 1113 Southwest 3rd Avenue, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, we built a bigger layout, and we, and we wired it in common bus, just like I did in this diagram with, with uh, suitcase connectors and 14 braided and 16 or 18 drops, DCS did not work at all. My line L worked great, but my DCS did not work. And I got on the phone and I called my good friend Barry Barkowski, Barkowski who wrote MTH's DCS Companion, which is a great book. And um, he told me I'm doing it all wrong. So what we did on that layout which was quite a bit bigger, 
And on this layout here as well, we draw another Easter egg. Here we got this big layout. We got to loop the track Easter egg. Going to show some squiggles on the Easter egg. Um, on this layout, we divide it again into blocks. Those are insulated rail joiners right there. And in the middle of the block, we have terminal block drop from the track down to the terminal block. Liz says show it closer. Okay. Where are the, where are the, where are the cameras at? Somewhere up here. Go straight up. Go straight up. Uh, uh, no. uh. I don't know. It's over here. There we go. There you go. Drop the terminal block right there under the layout. And then what we do from there is we take the plus and the minus wire and we bring those all the way back to the transformer, straight back to the transformer. And we connect those to a mama terminal block. Looks like this. Oh, there's my little one I was looking for. God dang it, where were you? Where were you five minutes ago? You're hiding out with your friends. What the heck? Okay, anyway. You use one of these terminal blocks, right? And so you've got the red wire coming in from the transformer or the TIU and the black wire coming in. And then a pair of these, location one, that's this one, right? Here's the terminal block, monster terminal block, right? And now we got another pair from this block coming back. That's two, and we got one from this block, that's three, and we got one from this block, that's four. And we call this star, because you can tell it looks like I'm drawing a star there, doesn't it? I mean, if I can turn it around. Of course, it looks like a star, Mr. Muffin, that is excellent, okay? So, so this is what we call star wiring, instead of common bus, all right? And this works much better for DCS. Here's uh, a question. How would you do this with two transformers? Ah, so with two transformers. Yeah, did you see on. the question up there? Oh, yeah, there it is. I can click on this. Did you know that, Lou? And you can, and you can see the question. Cool. How would you do this with two transformers? Yeah, good question. So you would have two of these. You yeah, would have yeah. one for transformer number one. For one loop of track, that's how I do it. So I got a single channel on a Z4000 or a ZWL, whatever. Is you could have done it without the channel. Uh, you could. I mean, I, it's pretty messy under there. No, I don't think that's good. <laughs> no, I no. In retrospect, that's not a good idea. No, we're not. Never mind. We're not going under the layout. We're, she that was a nice ad lib on the part of Mrs. Muffin. Sorry. Uh, we're not doing that. No, no, that was that was very thoughtful. Here, here, hold on a minute. Here's what we think about that. <laughs> okay, we're not. Yeah, we're not climbing to the layout. Show them what ours look like. But we have under our layout, we have like 14 of these. So we got one on every uh, track connected to half of a Z4000 or to another transformer, okay? Uh, in 3D, it resembles a radar dish. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a radar dish. Thank you. Your art skills are improving. Yeah. Oh, did you hear that? Mrs. Muffin says my art skills are improving. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So this is a star wiring diagram, right? So every loop... You're going to divide it into blocks. You're going to bring back a pair of wires to a mother terminal block like this DB1, PB, P, DB1. This is made by Minitronics. MTH has one as well. And uh, that's how we do it. All right. So we've talked about, let's just review because there will be a test. Simple layout. Loop a track, one connection, two connections if it goes slow. Yep, yep. You sell the terminal blocks. Okay? Yeah, we sell the terminal blocks, yeah, and the transformers. Yeah, we got all that. Yeah. Then this is common loop, common bus, sorry, common bus. And I like this technique a lot. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, 
But what about hanging the wires underneath here? We haven't talked about that. So on our first layout, Mrs. Muffin drilled holes through the one by fours and we could label them and we pulled the wire through there. And that was a pain in the butt. It was. And so then we went to uh, those hangers you use for conduit, the gray plastic hangers. They're really cheap and you can just screw them on the one by four bottom and just run the wires through there. My friends at the New Jersey High Railers, what they do is they take a piece of PVC pipe and cut it into little donuts and then cut a slit at the top. And then they screw that under the layout and use that. And uh, I don't know if PVC pipe cut into donuts is cheaper than no. my plastic hangers. Probably not, right? No. You know, those guys are it's just... a lot more labor intensive. And a lot, and a lot more labor intensive, Mrs. Muffin points but out. They did, probably have some did you hear that, Brent, Ben? A lot more labor intensive. <laughs> Sorry, there. Ben. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> All right. So, common bus, which this works out great. Okay. It works fine. Go ahead and divide it into blocks. And, you know, up until you get bigger than that. And then you need to go to star wiring. That's what this is right here under that little terminal block. Star wiring, where we're running a pair of wires to each block. Okay. And I have. One piece of paper left, and I don't have anything else to draw. Smart. But I got an orange marker, and I got a black marker. Okay. All right, let's jump back out of this mode then. We'll go to the other mode, the me mode. Here we are in the me mode. Okay, now. Um, so I did, I did my radar dish. Uh, hey, everybody. Any other uh, comments? That's kind of my overview of wiring the layout. I hope that was helpful. Um, I think I'll, I'm going to give myself some. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's good too. All right. Any other questions for me tonight? Anybody got any questions out there? I've got a few people on. Uh, Phil, Richard, Frank. On here, Jim Frisk. Hey, buddy. All right. Don't forget the apple polish. Yep. Yeah, we do sell terminal blocks and transformers. Right now, kind of the Lionel ZWL is kind of the top of the line, given we don't have any more 4,000s right now. But um, hopefully we'll have those again. So any other questions about wiring the layout? I got There's probably something else I forgot. We talked about soldering. Oh, that's good. We talked about rail dudes there. Good. Hey, anything else? Let me think. Well, I don't have any more content that I've prepared. The only comment I would make is the height of your layout is oh. tall enough that you can get under it to run all that stuff. Well, yeah, Mrs. Muffin just pointed out that the height of the layout is very important um, because we want to be able to get underneath there to run the wires around. And we use little stools that have wheels on them. We get at Sears. And I try to do the layout no... Uh, shorter than 46 inches off the ground which gives me enough room to get underneath there and roll around which i like to do uh, the other advantage of being at that height is the closer the trains are to your eye level the better they look right and you don't want to be like a helicopter seeing the whole thing at once so um, um you know that that works pretty good uh let's see anybody else have a comment about layout height are you all about the same, isn't it kind of where I'm at, 46 inches? Liz is reading the board uh, here. You have a sound mixing board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for Fast Track. Yeah, Bob, same for Fast Track. Uh, just use those little wires I showed you under the layout for those. Um, what, uh, what wattage uh, soldering iron would you need? Boy. Um, I, well, I wouldn't solder wire to Atlas because you got the terminal rail joiner and those are not expensive. So, but you, I mean, if I was soldering it, I'd probably turn the iron all the way up, whatever that is. Um, I should learn more about wattage, you know, but anyway, that's that. All right. Not much. So same for fast track. Yep. Yeah. So if you multiple multiple tracks richard said yeah so what you're going to do is basically treat each track like it's its own layout basically so each track is gonna 
be divided into blocks and it's going to have its leads back to a motherboard you know like we talked about there we go and then from here to the transformer red and black for the transformer down here and i mean i so like underneath my layout there's 13 of these it's not exactly this one but 13 terminal blocks and wires run to every block on every loop oh we got some more comments is one is one by fours richard says um let's see i gotta figure out what to do here okay here we go yeah before. Yeah, one by fours are strong enough. Yeah, for sure. So I do all of the bench work is made out of one by fours, and we build like a ladder. It's a four by eight section with uh, two eight footers on the side, on the long end, right, and then five in the middle, right, every two feet. So five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's plenty. And then we mount those on two by fours, and uh, and then you're gonna put. It, you know, we first put it together, it seems like a little not not as stable as you'd like. But as soon as you get the weight of the plywood or the MDF, if you're using that, mm -hmm. on top, uh, it works out fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Rail Dude says, how do you, what about wire management? How do you avoid the spaghetti syndrome? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, well, it's. Yeah, it's 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 pretty bad under there. <laughs> I mean, I think what you you do is if you run each pair back on its own set of um, conduit, the gray conduit holder things you screw in, and you can label them. I've got them under my layout where it says you know uh, third level inside, third level outside, second level middle, second level inside, second level outside. So those wires all run together. Um, and I don't, I mean, I, I think my spaghetti's worse because I did not spread the terminal blocks under the layout very far apart near the transformers. They're kind of all bunched in there. So I got like 13 of them in three feet or four feet and it, it's too tight and that makes it a little bit worse. Um, so, you know, I think you, I think spreading them out a little more would be good to kind of avoid that, honestly. Uh, tell Liz I want to order 10 blocks. You bet. Okay. <laughs> Where are we here? Here we go. Um, somebody made theirs 40 inches high and wish they'd made it taller. Oh, is that right? 40 yeah. inch? And you thought, where is that? That's coming. Down further. Down further? Up, up. up further? Okay. Yeah. I can click this little button and it pops up on the screen. Hey, uh, L. It's, uh, um. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you did yours at 40 inch and thought it'd be a little higher. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That that yeah. And then um, go down. Slycat says he's at forty and a half. So, are you really good at measuring half inches? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not really good at that. So, mine might actually be forty six and a half. I just don't really know, or forty five and a half. I don't know. But that's good. So yeah, okay. For and you're okay underneath there. That's working out. Good. Okay. All right. Go down. You've got some other. I got some others. Uh, I have put terminal building. blocks in. For, oh, yeah, good. Buildings, yeah, that's, yeah really smart. that's good. That's very smart to manage your, your building wiring. Yeah, for sure. Oh, what's the name of the cleaner we use? What's the name of the what? The cleaner that you use. On the track? Oh, no, for Dusty. Dusty. Oh, the cleaner. Oh, yeah. We use um, BB Gone or whatever it is. BB Gone, Gone Cleaner by um, JB. Yeah, JB. JB Smoke fluid, fluid guy. Yeah. What's his name? Jeb. JT Megasteam. Jeb. I know everybody's name. I don't know any of the company. <laughs> <laughs> we use, uh, yeah, the Be Gone Cleaner. And it works just really well. And it doesn't do anything to the paint. And if you go out on YouTube and look up Be Gone Cleaner on Mr. Muffin, there's a video out there of Mrs. Muffin cleaning uh, a couple of Rock Island. I think they were Rock Island F units I got I on eBay. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they worked really, really good. And it comes with a spray bottle, and he even throws in a rag. So, yeah, use Be Gone Cleaner. Yeah, we're going to York. Yeah. Yeah, we got two booths. And, uh, oh, okay. Somebody did two by fours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, two by four frame. That's, you can walk around on that, can't you? And, and labeled it. Okay. And you drilled. Well, 
a hole through a two by four. You're yeah. good at that. And labeled it. Yeah, that helps. That's, That's a good plan. Yep. Very smart. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're going to York next month. Yeah. We're bringing the models from Corber Models is coming to York with us. And Dr. Jack, Dr. Jack from Nashville, Tennessee, the famous Milwaukee Road modeler and detailer and all around great guy. He's coming to York with us. He'll be in our booth signing autographs and exploring all his patents. What's that? Yeah, exploring doing his, his <laughs> Yeah, doing his patents. He came up, he took a what looks like a uh inside of a paper towel roll cardboard thing and he uses it for smoothing out decals on the side of buildings. And somebody asked him what that was and he goes, Well, I can't tell you it's I'm gonna patent it. So <laughs> somebody asked about their cement floor and leveling oh thing. yeah yeah basically you have to use a level and cut your legs different heights to level it yeah yeah we've had that problem you can shim them but if you measure with a level and go like 42 and 40 and it makes it much better yeah uh, we, uh we're being asked about yeah we're gonna do more with ho um obviously we're gonna do um Lionel, uh, we've got Woodland Scenics in stock now. Um, I've got uh, Atlas. We're doing a lot with Atlas and HO. Um, we just, uh, uh, I've got a few Broadway Limited engines coming. So let's see, I got to figure out. Let's know when the store in Atlanta is going to open. Well, coincidentally, Mrs. It's going to open. What do you want to say? You want to say something about it? Technically, we're open. Um, but our grand reopening is next Friday. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Jack selling logs. logs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can come to York and get autographed logs. Custom. Custom. Custom, Custom logs. Yeah, yeah get Dr. those Jack. from Dr. Jack at York. Yep. Beautifully weathered. <laughs> you just, you, they look like the real thing. Yeah, what plywood thickness? I mean, we kind of stick with three quarters. At least half inch. Yeah, at least at five eighths is okay. I mean, uh, if you use MDF, it's a lot heavier, but it's really, 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 really smooth is what I like about it. And um, it holds paint really well. But, yeah, you can uh, – yeah. our layout's all three-quarter. Yeah. All right. Uh, Back to your question. The layout is – the store is reopening next Friday and Saturday is our grand reopening, April 5th and 6th. It's going to be uh, 12 to 7 on Friday. Our new store hours will be until 7 o'clock on Friday to give people after work hours. And on Saturdays, our hours will be 10 to 4, which is a little bit longer than the layout is open. So uh, come see us. We'll have lots of food, you know, all free. And uh, you can meander around the store, see what we've got. It'll be fun. Thank you. Thank you. There's a commercial message from Mrs. Muffin. Did you guys notice that she looks more in focus than I do? I think she's, you know, maybe she's crowding me too close to the camera. I don't know. <laughs> So, hey, Rob says, talk about running DCS and Legacy. So, if you go back to the beginning of DCS, uh, the very first time uh, that was publicly shown was by Mike Wolf at York at the uh, museum for the dealer session. I was there, and he connected Legacy, or it was TMCC at the time, one wire to the ground side, and then DCS hooked it up to the same loop, and he was running a Lionel engine and an MTH engine on the same track at the same time, and it works great. So what do, you, so what are we gonna, what do we need to do? You answer your question. So what you want to do under the layout is you want to bridge all the grounds together. And uh, so under my layout, there's a wire from uh, the mother terminal block for whatever track I'm on. There's a wire off the ground side. That's the black one. Which one's that? That's that one. There's a wire under there that runs to the next block, whichever way that goes. And then a wire from there that runs to the next block. So there's a daisy chain of wires on the ground side that connects all 13 blocks together. And then just one wire from the legacy base connects to those bridged wires. And that's all you need for legacy. And that gives you legacy on every loop. And that'll be the same with the base three. That's not changing. So, um, but again, just on the ground side. And um, and so we can put a TMCC or legacy engine on any loop we have here. And it'll run through the, you know, cab two, cab one, either one, just no problem at all. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and 
It does not interfere with DCS. DCS doesn't interfere with it. It's terrific. Um, let's see. Uh, what at Walter thinks we need to run more Sioux potato cars, if you haven't seen them on the layout. <laughs> Uh, I just took them off, I don't know, three weeks ago, and give them a break. And um, they're uh, white, right, with blue doors. And blue doors for the Sioux line means it's potato. And there's a red door. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's tomato. I don't know. But they, maybe maybe somebody knows that. Um, thanks, Bob. I will definitely see you at York. Um, yep, you have to order. Yep, yep. Please order some CSX locomotive rolling stock soon. Yep, please do. Uh, can you use our small? Yes. Yeah. Train board says, can we use our 50 year old small transformers to light our buildings? Yep. Yep. Or buy HO transformers, Jeff. But your, uh, your, your older transformers or CW 80s or, you know, anything. And, um, I talked to a guy today that's got an old Lionel RS1. It's a 50 watt transformer. And he's got, I think 160 lights on it. It's, not working it's tripping so 50 50 watts wasn't enough but uh he's gonna upgrade that and get that going um thank you jackson thank you we're, i'm gonna build uh uh i'm still negotiating the space to, honestly but we're gonna build a, a ho layout using the old uh dpm uh track plan with all the buildings and stuff that they used to take to train shows everywhere before they sold the company um, and it's a really beautiful layout and it's one of my favorite HO layouts. So we're going to, my plan is to build that layout in the new store and, um, and it'll be all the HO stuff is on the West side of the store and that'll look pretty terrific. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. Any other question? Did I miss anything? Lou's helping me read the pages here. Slide cat needs a bigger house. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Dr. Jack solid logs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else? All right. Pretty fun. Um, I think I'm pretty caught up. I think I'm pretty caught up. Uh, well, it's only 746. I don't have any more content. Anybody have any other questions? I'm happy to try to answer them. Anything else? Um, we are um, anxiously awaiting. Uh, I know we got a bunch of pallets coming. Looking forward to that. Uh, MTHGP30. Yeah, Chessie. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to we'll keep our eyes open for you. Um I don't have one right now for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh I think MTH still has their GP30 tooling. Um have you hey, train board says have you tried 3D printing yet? Yeah. Uh we've got um three, I think, 3D printers yes. uh in the what we call the maker space down there. Jeff makes uh 3D parts. He's been making he started making chickens and i've got a flock of chickens on the layout that came from jeff and and that led to my buddy bill klein who's not on and i don't think but he he then wanted ducks and you know pigs and i don't know so jeff's been making animals down there the farmyard has grown the farmyard has grown i'm trying to get him to make a chicken coop for me i haven't had that yet um but uh we've got that and then we bought a really big laser cutter um that we're waiting to install we'll get it in there and um so that'd be pretty fun uh jackson says we ought to get some uh customs going with some of the ho guys you know i don't know i don't know how they would react to that i haven't asked them yet um yeah that's interesting i hadn't really thought about that um yeah richard i wish you would get the tp and w locomotives i've got gp35 still and uh rs 11s i think uh i've got some cabooses i had harry make me a set of tp and w heavyweight passenger cars with all the detail on them and i need to get those on the layout those are pretty nice um so yeah that's really fun um all right down in rocky's country oh, i love rocky rocky's a great guy yeah well he's a great guy he told me that he never cried so hard as when I became a dealer. It's true. <laughs> I stopped driving to Cincinnati and <laughs> buy it all by trades for Rocky. So good friend, though. Good friend. All right. Well, anything else for the good of the cause, you guys? I think I just screwed up my frame, maybe. But uh -oh. phone's ringing. 
All right, here I'll put it back to get my red back. Um, just picked up a GP7 in CNO. Yep, good. Well, I think I, I think I, I think I pretty much did it. So thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, Apologies I'll, to Facebook. I'll play the again and uh, we'll figure out what's wrong with Facebook and we'll repost this out there. We'll get it out there. So, um, and uh, I'm going to try to do this every two weeks. We'll give it a try. So, hey, thank you all very much. Thanks, Thanks for watching everybody. with us, hanging with us. We appreciate it. And uh, should we play our song? Our Happy Christmas. Yeah.